Hi guys, welcome to another Chama Valley Maths um, tutorial video. Looking at the core maths papers, we're going to be looking at paper two, the stats paper. And today we're going to be looking at the, the question about the confidence interval. So question five on that paper. I'd recommend that you print the paper out and, and have a go along with the video. That's the best way to sort of revise and do these questions. Um, so what's this question about? It's quite a long wordy one and it can be a little bit obscure as to what we're, we're trying to do. So I'll, I'll do my best to try and explain it to you. We've got a drinks company called Fizzy Fuzzy and they produce drinks in 500 milliliter bottles. And it says, assume the weight in milligrams of the sweetener used in the 500 milliliter bottles of Fizzy Fuzzy soft drink is normally distributed. So we're going to assume that it's normally distributed with a mean of mu and a variance of 15. Then that's for the, the population. That's for all of the drinks, those, those two values. So the mean of mu, we don't know the actual mean of all of the drinks. We don't know the average number, sorry, the average amount of sugar used in the entire, in all of the drinks in the entire factory. But we do know the variance. The variance is 15. And it says the weight in milligrams of the sweetener contained in a randomly selected sample of 12 500 milliliter bottles of fizzy fuzzy soft drink is. And it lists the, the values below for the 12 drinks. So what they've done is they've taken a sample of 12 drinks, measured the amount of sweetener in those 12 drinks. And from that, we're going to try and work out um, some limits of the actual mean. So, you know, how much do we think is is in the drinks on average in the whole factory? Well, we're going to work out some values that we think it lies between. All right, so from the sample, we can then use some stats techniques to work out two values that we're confident the actual mean for all of the drinks lies in between. Okay, so how do we do that? There is a formula. Now this formula here, you've got to re remember this. I mean, they're not giving it to us by the looks of it, so we need to commit that to memory. Okay, and as we go through the problem, I hope that it will become easier to memorize as you'll understand what each part means. Now, let's just go through some of the notation. We've got X bar here, and you may recognize that as, as the mean, but I've already mentioned that the mean up here is mu. Well, the mean mu is for the whole factory. That's for all of the drinks, okay? Again, we don't know that. So we need a different um, letter to represent the mean of the sample. So the X bar is just the average amount from the sample, these 12 uh, values here. So we'll work that out in a second. The Z value, well, we've, we've met Z before when we were doing normal distribution. So that Z uh, value is going to come from our um, Z tables, and we'll look that up in a second. The standard deviation sign up here, well, that's just standard deviation. Um, and that's going to come from the question. It doesn't actually give us the standard deviation of the question, so how are we going to work that out? We'll think about that in a second. And N is just the number in the sample. So how many drinks did we sample? That's our, our N value. So the first one that we can do really is, is the um, square root of N, because we know what N is. It's 12. That was the number of drinks. So the square root of N would just be the square root of 12. So I'll put that there. That square root of N is just root 12. Okay, there's 12 drinks that we sampled, so square root of 12 is root 12. Don't decimalize that. I mean, leave it as, as square root. You can type that into your calculator, so we might as well leave it in third form. That's what we call third form. Um, the standard deviation next, where does that come from? Well, they've told us the variance is 15. Now, hopefully, some of us know that the variance is just the standard deviation squared. Okay, so the variance is the standard deviation squared. So, if we want the standard deviation and we know the variance, we just have to square root the variance. Okay, so the variance is 15. Let's square root that. So, very similar to what we just did. We're going to call that root 15. So, I'll put that down there. That value is root 15. And, I mean, we, could, we should probably do the, um, the mean next. So, the mean of the sample. So the mean of our 12 drinks, let's let's add all of these up and divide by 12. So pause the video if you need some time to do that on your calculator. And hopefully you've done that. And then I'll, I'll give you the answer. I, I've calculated that earlier. So you should be getting for that a value of 81.25. You can see that's sort of reasonable. It looks like it's in between some of these values. It's, it's sort of in there somewhere. 
and the Z score. Now this is the, the, the part that people are finding tricky when I teach this. So I'm going to go through this hopefully slowly enough that we can understand what we're doing. Now, it says that we need to calculate a 95% confidence interval and the data is normally distributed. So I've got a diagram here and all that we're saying is, if I pull this over a bit, is we're saying, right, the real mean for the factory drinks lies between two values, okay, and they want to give, they want us to give the values so that we're 95% sure that the mean of the whole factory drinks lies between those two values, okay, based on what we've discovered from our sample. And the formula will do that for us. When we put the numbers into here, it will tell us the upper limit value, which we'll write down here, and it will tell us the lower limit value. And you can see how it's doing that. It says X bar, so it's the mean plus a value. So the mean plus some amount will get us up to this value here. And then it says the mean, you've got a minus sign underneath, so you have to do it again with a minus. So it'd be the mean minus a value will give us the lower limit. All right, and it will be the same value that we add or subtract from the mean to give us our lower limit and our upper limit. But we can't do this yet because we haven't worked out our Z value. All right. So you remember from the stats tables, let's have a look at those that we were supplied. Um, here they are. If you want to know the Z value for a, a point on the normal distribution, then you need to you you can you need to know the probability. So you need to know the probability to the left of that line that you you want your value for. So you need to know the probability to the left of the line that you're looking up. All right. So from our problem. What is the area? Now let me just I'm going to grab an arrow here to try and make this a bit more obvious. So we're going to the left, so we'll take this one. If we want to know the Z value for the upper limit, the Z value for that bit there, then we need to know the area to the left. That is unhelpful. That's not what I was after, was it? Let me try a different arrow. Um, I think it must be the other way then. So we need to know the area to the left. Okay, not to the lower limit, because we know that in between the two lines, from there to there, that's 95%. But we will need all of it to the left, the whole area to the left. So you've got 95% from here to there, but then you've got to include this extra 2.5%, because that's the area to the left of this line here. So our Z value for this line here is going to be, going to have a, um, a sort of a percentage of 95 plus 2.5 and that's 97.5% to the left of this line here all right so let's go to our z um table and look up 97.5% now the probabilities in the table are not given in percentages they're given in um decimals so what is the decimal for 97.5% if you're not sure how to calculate that, you just divide a percentage by 100, and that will give you the equivalent decimal. So if you do 97.5 divided by, um, sorry, yeah, 97.5 divided by 100, you will get 0 0.975. Now, where is that in the table? We've got some 971 here, so that's like 97.1. Going up, 97.2, 97.3, all the way up, and you can see it's perfectly here, it's this value here so 97.5 percent is that value there 0.975 so you can see the z value lies in bold in the margins so if we scroll down here it's we've got we know it's 1.9 and the second decimal place comes from up here so 1.9 and the second decimal place is a six so our value is 1.96 okay so the Z value we need for our um, formula is 1.96. So I'm going to drop that in there. Okay, good. So we've got all of our values. Now all we've got to do is plug them into a calculator using the formula. And we'll be able to work out the upper limit value and the lower limit value. And we can put those onto our diagram. So grab the calculator and start typing in the value. So X bar was 81. 
0.25 and that's plus the z value which is 1.96 1.96 multiply this little star here is a sign for multiplication so multiply if i'm multiplying i'm going to use brackets so i'm just going to put that in in brackets and what am i multiplying well i'm multiplying the standard deviation which was root 15 so i put that in root 15 in fact I, that's a fraction isn't it that's a fraction there so let's stick in a fraction and then we can put root 15 on the top for the standard deviation and that's all divided by um, n the square root of n and n was the number of bottles in our sample so that's root 12 put that in and use the wheel to get to the right hand side so I can put in a bracket and hopefully that will give me a value so I've got 83.44 um, so that's going to be my upper limit okay that's my upper value to nine i'm 95 percent sure that the amount of sweetener in a drink for the factory won't go above 83.44 milligrams all right so i'm just going to write that in that was 83.44 so let's type that in as our upper limit put that in there 83.44 and that is the upper limit all right so again with the calculator go in and do it again with a minus sign instead of a plus sign here and you should come come out with a value of around 79.0 so i'm um, just do that on your calculator pause the video have a go i'm running out of time to record so i'm rushing this a little bit have a go at that and then you should be able to to say that you are 95 percent sure that from the sample the real true mean of the factory for all of the drinks, uh, you're 95% confident that it lies between 83.44 and 79.0. Okay, right, so moving on quickly, the second part to this question is it says the production manager claims that Fizzy Fussy uses less sweetener than a rival uh, company, Lumasat. The mean weight of sweetener in the 500 milliliter bottles of the other company, Lumasat, is 82 milligrams. Comment on the production manager's claim. So, our sample, if we go back, what were the values of our sample? So, we, were, we had a confidence interval of, let me just copy this across and we'll take it with us. 79.0 and 83.44. How does that lie with the claim? So where is this new company's? Where is the 82 milligrams? Where does that lie? So if I drag this down, 82. Let's put it on our graph and then compare. So the 82 is it's in between. It's in between our confidence level. So we're not really sure. I mean, if it was outside, if it was up here somewhere, if it was like 85, then we would be 95% sure that we are better because we know that um, our true mean is below 83.44. We're 95% sure of that. But this number 82 is right in the middle. So we can't really say. Because I mean there's a chance that our true mean is above 82. Because we've got some area above 82. And also we've got some area below 82. So it could be correct. It could be incorrect. If I quickly skip to the mark scheme. You can see that it says um, 82 lies between the, within the 95% confidence let, interval. The claim could be correct, could be incorrect, and it's, but it also adds, as the Lumasat mean is above the sample mean. Now, we didn't consider that, so the sample mean for our sample of 12 drinks was 81.5, uh, 81.25, which is below the 82. So we could actually say, really, that it's likely that, you know, we are, that we are correct because our sample mean is below that. It's likely, it's more likely. Um, so I hope that helps. I know it was a bit rushed. Um, it's a quite a complicated question. Watch the video again to try and clarify that. Here is a um, practice question for you to do. So pause the video, have a go at that question, and then I'll give you the answer, okay? So hopefully you've had a go at that using the tables, and the answer to that 
is displayed there. Okay, so I hope that helps.